Hey guys, this is Garrett with SMB Capital. I'm here on the New York City desk. Uh, it's a little bit after four o'clock, um, right after the close. And today I'm gonna talk about how I have my screen set up, um, my trading platform, what I use, the things I do to make things easier for me. And this is gonna be a very, very basic introductory view of you know, just a general trading setup. And I trade a lot of intraday momentum scalp trades and I also swing trade so the tape is very important to me short time frames are very important to me and also the higher time frame and the context and things that are going on in the overall market so no matter where you kind of run in the whole trading spectrum you might find something uh, useful in here and the one takeaway uh, for me if I were watching this video is that I would care much more about the concepts that I'm talking about and just kind of the general ways that I'm going about catering things to my needs because all of these things are things that make sense to me and so you might trade completely differently and therefore you might want to cater these things to you. So your trading setup might look completely different so this is just one example and um, let's jump into it. All right, so I'm gonna go over four general screens that I use that are the most important to me, okay? And so, really quickly, the four are the trading screen, okay? And that's what we're looking at here because that's where we're gonna start. So, um, that's, that's everything to do with trade information, level two, the tape, okay? Number two would be a multiple time frame chart screen, um, so that's, the way I get a bird's eye view on the market. Number three would be the watch list screen. And so that's where I have a chart grid that shows all the stocks that I'm watching. And then number four is a free screen. So this might have to do with something I'm studying. I might put the market internals up here. Um, and then along with all of this, you know, we have a lot of tools that we use here, like market filters, um, which I'll also show you. So starting with the screen that we're in right now, um, the trading screen, this is the most important screen to me. Like if I could only have one part of my setup, it would have to be this because I cannot trade without it. Um, so you can see here how I have two level two montages. So one here on the left and one here on the right. And it's, you know, it's after four o'clock, so there's not a lot of trading going on. If this were regular trading hours, uh, the tape would be going crazy there'd be a lot more action um, but this is where uh, this is where my eyes are a lot of the day just staring at this tape if you want to learn three more real-world setups that our traders use including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner check out the free webinar that we're currently running just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen that will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. This is the level two, and over here on the left, these are the prints, okay? And, and it repeats over here, and this would be just a different ticker over on the right. We have the level two, we have the prints, okay? And I have the prints colored in red for when they're hitting the bid, okay? So that would be selling that's hitting the bid. And I have the prints colored in green when they're paying the offer, okay? And that would be buying, paying the offer here on the right. And it's the relationship between these prints and the bid and the offer that allow me to see what's going on in the tape. And a lot of traders look at charts. I look at charts, I love charts. And I consider the tape the shortest time frame. Um, it's what's happening right now. And so it's a lot like a chart, except it's immediate. And so that's why it's so important. And so when I'm trading and I pay an offer, I'm, I'm actually looking at that offer that I'm taking 
and I'm looking at the size. I'm, I'm making sure that there's enough size in that offer for me to take. Okay, and when I take it, um, I want to be able to see my trade. Okay, so here in the middle, um, you can't see anything right now. It's all black because I have nothing on. Okay, but this is where my trade information shows up. Okay, and I'll, I'll put on a small trade here just to just to kind of demonstrate this, right? So, so if I just do 100 shares here of the uh, of the Qs, and let's see, let's let's say I just pay the offer. So see, it's 324.60. We get in just like that. You can see how right on the bottom, you can see my 100 shares, and you can see the price that I paid for, um, and that will be there until I get out of the position. Okay, and you can see how if I get out, it disappears. All right, and if I want to post a bid or post an offer, that's going to show up in this space right here. Okay, and so again, let me just do that really quick and just show you how um, this works. See how I I just put an offer up for 324.63 and it appears here. And if it gets taken, um, it'll show up down here as an actual trade. So I'm going to cancel that. Okay, so, um, and then if I put a stop in, it's going to show up in this space right here. So you can see how important this screen is to me. And so above these level twos, I just have one minute charts that show the last 80 minutes of trade each. Okay, and this is, this is linked to my level two, right? So if I'm over here on the left montage, if I want to trade, um, let's say, say I want to trade SPY, and I type SPY in, the chart's going to change to SPY as well. Okay, so it's very, very easy to work with because I can flip through tickers um, and instantly trade something else. And so in the middle, I have an extra chart, and a lot of the times, something related to what I'm trading, I'm going to want to just see how it's acting, right? Like, so I might be watching VIX if I'm trading the Qs, or if I'm trading some meme stock, I might, I might have another sympathy play up here just so I can see how that's acting, okay? And then above the chart, mm -hmm. I have a tick scrolling window. That's what we call them at the firm. But basically what this is is news. And again, I have this linked to my level two. So when I switch, it's going to switch with me. So you can see how if I go to say like GME, we're going to get a little a little news up here on GME, right? And if I switch this to uh, NVTA, we're going to get the news on NVTA. And that's really important because when you're trading something and you see a lot of volume come in and a bunch of um, you know, a bunch of bids get hit, you want to make sure there's not news in the stock that you're trading. Okay? So um, and then in the middle, I just have the NYSE tick, right? And this is a market internal that, you know, just basically measures the, um, the amount of stocks that are trading on an uptick versus the amount of stocks that are trading on a downtick. And the, this is a very immediate market internal. It's telling me what's happening with the overall market this instant. Okay, and so that's, that's why I have it up here on this screen because generally speaking, everything on this screen is a very short time frame. It's telling me what's happening right now. It's allowing me to execute orders and it's allowing me to see the orders that I have in the market. All right, so let's move on to my charts. All right, so this is my multiple time frame chart setup. And when I'm flipping through tickers in the middle of the day, this is what I'm using. So this is all linked to one ticker. So right now we're looking at the cues and it's going to give me a different time frame for the same ticker. So if I switch this to SPY, they're all going to switch to SPY. Okay, so what this is doing is giving me a bird's eye view of the stock. And so if you're reading it like a book from the upper left to the right, um, it's going to be a weekly chart. And this weekly chart is showing a year's worth of price action. And the moving average is measuring a year's worth of price, price action. And then it's going to be a daily chart. And this is showing a quarter of price action. And the moving average is going to show a quarter of price action, about three months. Then we have an hourly chart. 
and this moving average is going to be showing about a month and it's showing about a month of price action and then it's a 15 minute chart and again this is a week and the moving average is showing a week's worth of price action and then the five minute chart down below is showing two days and this moving average is showing a day's worth of price action and this is also um, with a two-day view app which is very important in my trading um, and then the intraday chart one minute and then there's a tick chart on the right so you can see as we move through these time frames they just get lower and lower and this allows me to see all the time frames you know the, the time frames generally in my opinion they're arbitrary in terms of like you know whether you use a two minute or a three minute or a five minute but what is important to me is that I'm spreading my time frames out in a manner where the relationships make sense to each other, that I understand what period of price action this chart is, is really demonstrating. So for me, it makes a lot of sense to look at an intraday chart, to look at it, then a two-day chart, and then a week, and then a month, and then a quarter, and then a year. And so if someone calls something out in the middle of the day and I have not been watching this, like say I'm, you know, I didn't get levels for it before the market opened, I'm not familiar with the chart, you know, someone says NVTTA and I say, okay, cool. It's going to take me three seconds to see that this thing was, has been in a massive downtrend, you know, over the past year and that it's coming, you know, coming into this eight level, which, which looked pretty important back, back in March, right? And so, I don't have to spend much effort to figure out what the long-term chart looks like, which is great, okay? And so as I'm looking at what I'm trading, I'm just looking at all these charts to kind of get a feel for, you know, when we might be coming into support and resistance, how extended are things on various time frames, you know, where are the consolidations, where, where has the volume been done? And then as you start to customize how you trade, you can start you can start adding some really cool things in, right? So like this is a this is a thinkorswim platform. You might use a different one, um, but for me, I figured out how to how to code a lot of stuff into this platform. So for instance, um, these little purple carrots on this 15-minute chart, and I'll zoom right into it. You know, this means that price the price is outside of the Keltner channel on multiple time frames, which is kind of cool because that's telling me that it's pretty extended on this time frame. Okay, so, so little things like that, like that might not be useful to you, something else might be useful to you, but you know, as you, as you start to develop um, a style, you can start to develop tools that cater to that style. Um, so that's the multiple time frame chart screen, so let's move on to the watch list screen. All right, so this is my grid of intraday charts. So it looks like there's, there's 12 here, and each one is a different ticker, and this is basically my watch list for the day. And you know, today's a good example that my watch list actually by the end of the day on this grid was completely different than the way it started because a lot of names started popping up in the middle of the day. So this watch list is constantly evolving. Um, and I might have more than 12, but I'll put the most important 12 up here. I always have SPY, the Qs, and IWM, and the VIX right up top. And then these, these bottom ones here are always changing, right? And so if I'm trading, four names they're all going to be here and this way um, I can kind of sit back and watch all these names at the same time um, and then over here on the right is our firm's blotter so that's just kind of giving you other tickers that like other people might be trading um, and so you know it's pretty simple they're just intraday three minute charts you know why do I choose a three minute chart here well you know they're small because there's there's a lot of tickers up here so you know a one minute gets a little busy and I do like the three minute look but you know you could have a five minute you could have a one minute it doesn't really matter I just want to be able to see all of these tickers uh, with their view apps and their intraday price levels and if I take this away you can see some of the tools I use like so I'll, I'll take this window away and for example um, like this this here I'll blow it up is a really cool tool that I developed um, which it's it's a super simple thing it's something that anyone can do. And it basically lists all the ETFs, like the major sector ETFs, the commodity ETFs, um, the currency ETFs. And I'm able to rank them by RVOL, 
and I'm able to rank them by how uh, far above or below the opening print they are. So at a glance, I'm able to see the rotations in the market and just how strong or weak or how relevant, meaning how much volume, um, is one of these things doing. So like today, you can see XLE was the strongest intraday, um, you know, followed by uh, you know, steel and, and you know, Chinese internet stocks. Um, and that arc was the weakest uh, intraday, at least at the close. Um, so I will, I will be watching this throughout the day, especially in the morning. Let's, uh, let's move on to the free screen. All right, so this is a fourth screen. I call it the free screen because I just think that if you have any space that you can put something that really, really relates to your trading, um, th this is a great place to do it. So if, you know, if, you're, if you're working on something, if you're doing research on something, um, if, if there's something that's very, very specific to the way you trade that you've developed, um, you know, it's very important to have access to that. And so for me, it's the market internals. Um, looking at this, th this is filled with indicators that I developed that I coded in the Thinkorswim. I'm not going to get into the details of it, but the point is, is that this screen allows me to see the breadth, um, the advanced decline, how much volume is flowing in and out of the, um, the up stocks versus the down stocks, the NYSE tick, the trend of the NYSE tick, um, like all of these things play into my perception of what kind of day we're having in the overall market. Okay, so, so this is a very important screen that I'm just checking throughout the day, um, communicating to my team, you know, how are things looking, and it really helps me get a bird's eye view um, and really color the day with you know, strength, weakness, or just neutrality. You know, a lot of times we're having a nothing day, and it's really important to know that. Um, so for me, this is usually my fourth screen unless I'm working on something else. And if I, again, if I take this away, there's some stuff underneath that are very important to me. So um, you can see up here on top these lists of tickers. These are all market filters. Again, stuff that I've developed, stuff that people on my team have developed. And it's just a list of symbols that show up throughout the day that are meeting certain criteria. And a lot of these are just simple as you know what's doing the most volume right you can you can develop stuff like you know I just want to see everything that does an average volume of over two million shares a day uh, that's doing over three R vol right and it's going to give you those tickers you can rank them by R vol and that way you can tell what's in play right away so if there's something that you didn't do homework on if there's something that didn't show up in your pre-market scans it might show up at you know 9:45 in the morning, and these uh, these filters are going to alert you to that. And so, these are very key for me. Um, and then the charts below, um, these are again are, we're just linked to the first screen that we covered, right? Which was the the level two, the trade information. So these are linked to my level two. So when I go say to um, to a different ticker, say I go to spy. And I'm, I'm just changing this on my level two. You can't see it because it's a different screen. But when I go to that, these charts are going to change to SPY. Um, and again, that allows me to see multiple time frames um, in the stocks that I'm trading. So I hope this helps. I hope this gives you some ideas on things that you can, you can do yourself to help your trading. And, and um, if you have any questions, you know, get my, get my email from... Uh, you know, from the, from the information in the video, and I'd be happy to, um, to answer any of them for you. Good luck with trading. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video. From all of us at SMB, train and trade well.